All right. So we are back here at Web Summit Rio, and we have uh, Alexi from Singularity Net, uh, who is joining me. Great to have you here, Alexi. Uh, that's great. Yeah. Amazing. So why don't you just tell us a bit about uh, Singularity Net and what you guys do? Uh, Singularity Net uh, Foundation uh, uh, was uh, organized uh, uh, to reach a decentralized uh, AGI. And uh, we have uh, two main uh, directions in pursuing this goal. Uh, the first one is the platform uh, of uh, AI services uh, uh, communicating over blockchain. It's a decentralized uh, marketplace uh, uh, to which uh, anyone can contribute, uh, like uh, publish their services or to use uh, services of others to uh, create meta services uh, over multiple existing services or creating uh, and user products uh, and so on. And uh, another component uh, is uh, AGI R&D itself and uh, our uh, main product here is uh, OpenCock Hyperon, uh, which is an R&D uh, platform for AGI and uh, which is a sort of uh, uh, refactoring or uh, even uh, building from uh, scratch a new version of uh, OpenCock uh, cognitive platform. Got it, got it. And then why don't you tell us a bit more about your kind of personal background? I know you've been in the, the artificial general intelligence world for some time now, but tell us a bit about your kind of your career and your research and then how you arrived at this point. Well, yeah, uh, I uh, started uh, working uh, in the field of uh, uh, AI and uh, in particular in uh, computer vision uh, starting from uh, 1998. Uh, I worked uh, in a group of uh, people uh, doing uh, some outsourcing for different companies uh, like uh, Intel, Coral, uh, LG Electronics, uh, Samsung and others. Uh, but uh, I was interested uh, in AGI. It wasn't <laughs> called AGI uh, back then, but uh, still uh, we were talking about uh, thinking machines uh, and uh, this uh, work in uh, computer vision uh, uh, was uh, just the best uh, uh, related thing I could find and it was great uh, to have uh, a lot of practical experience uh, with uh, uh, building uh, say uh, robotic vacuum cleaners with vision and uh, uh, forest fire recognition systems and uh, other stuff uh, uh, but uh, I still uh, had been conducting uh, my own uh, AGI research and uh, uh, I found uh, that uh, this field uh, started emerging uh, with uh, some uh, uh, co collective uh, books uh, uh, with uh, Dr. Ben Garcel, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Markus Hutter, uh, Dr. Jürgen Schmidt-Huber and others. Uh, and uh, then uh, AGI conference uh, series uh, started uh, maybe in uh, 2007 or 2008. Uh, I started uh, uh, keeping track on them and uh, uh, then I finally uh, went uh, to uh, my first AGI conference uh, in Oxford in 2012 and uh, started communicating uh, on uh, this uh, topic uh, with uh, uh, my colleagues. And uh, finally, uh, when Singularity Net uh, was uh, founded uh, by uh, Ben Gertzel and others, uh, I joined it. Uh, during this time, I also had uh, some uh, experience with uh, uh, giving uh, courses on AI, computer vision, and even AGI at a few universities as a professor. And what I find surprising, or maybe something I didn't realize, was the extent to which a lot of this AI research has been happening for a long time now. There's been you know, multiple decades of this intensive research going on kind of behind the scenes. We've been through a few different AI winters. Um, but this, this concept of artificial general intelligence, it's kind of a buzzword now, but it, this idea has been around for quite a long time. It's been being developed by folks like yourself for quite a long time. And it really just kind of came into the, you know, the mainstream maybe a year, year and a half ago with ChatGPT emerging. Um, but I guess my question to you would be, are you surprised at how fast this became, this went from being just something that was being researched and that to something that's all of a sudden, you know, every company is an AI company now. Uh, just in the last year. Is this surprising or is this expected? Well, uh, it's both because, uh, well, uh, uh, when I uh, started visiting um, AGI conferences, uh, 
I also started uh, trying to popularize uh, AGI explicitly in uh, universities, in uh, some public lectures, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, you know the concept of technological singularity, that uh, the progress is uh, accelerating uh, faster than uh, exponent, and uh, it uh, uh, will uh, hit uh, like an infinity in a finite amount of time, and uh, there were different uh, uh, predictions uh, by, say, Kurzweil and others uh, when this uh, will happen. And uh, actually, uh, of course, there were some uncertainties uh, in uh, these predictions, but uh, it was clear that uh, something will be happening quite soon. And uh, uh, I tried to convince people uh, in uh, 12 years before then, this will be happening. But uh, still, it is uh, surprising that uh, it is really happening. Look, we, are, <laughs> we were right. It is happening in a little bit different way than uh, we expected. But uh, yes, uh, it uh, like uh, fits this curve. Interesting. Yeah, it, it, it strikes me that the this was something that I think people maybe didn't, there just wasn't enough maybe like publicity around it when it was really being fully developed or there's kind of weird narratives about like Terminator and, you know, like AI, you know, artificial intelligence sort of, get, you know, taking over the world and becoming smarter than humans and enslaving the human race or something like that. But I think, you know, some of the work that you've been doing and your colleagues has really been folks, you know, just laser focused on the, the, the development of the core infrastructure and protocols and that type of thing. Um, and then it all, it just hits hit the point where, okay, this stuff is ready for the mainstream now. Um, I mean, one question I have for you would be, you know, the, the, there's, there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of AI tools now on the market, everything from the chat GPTs to, to, you know, even just for, you know, podcast editing, like I, you know, have a little AI video clip editor that edits my clips for me. How like impressive are these tools in your mind? Is this what you envisioned when you talk about like AI and AGI becoming a thing? Like are the tools on the market today, what you envisioned, or is this still sort of like, okay, this is a fun little toy, but we still have a long way to go before this becomes real. Well, it's uh, still the same uh, uh, because uh, on the one hand, uh, these tools uh, are not uh, AGI. They are, are still narrow AI, and we can uh, discuss uh, whether ChatGPT is close to AGI or not uh, a little bit later, if you wish. Uh, but uh, it's still amazing because uh, like 25 years ago, uh, we were solving very simple problems uh, uh, from uh, the current perspective, and uh, they looked quite uh, complex back, back then, like recognizing uh, uh, 10 uh, types of uh, objects uh, or playing one uh, computer game with uh, handcrafted uh, features and representations and so on. Uh, but uh, then uh, such uh, things as uh, uh, Atari playing, uh, uh, AI plane uh, networks uh, uh, appeared, uh, AlphaGo and its uh, following versions like uh, MuZero and others appeared, which uh, uh, solved uh, the problems which uh, were considered very, very complex. Uh, a lot of scientists were writing uh, uh, their PhD thesis on uh, this, and uh, uh, it, it was uh, indeed a huge amount of uh, research, uh, but uh, later uh, e even a schoolboy could uh, or girl uh, could uh, write a simple program uh, with the use of uh, the pre-trained uh, uh, deep neural networks uh, and other tools uh, which uh, uh, can solve the problems uh, uh, which were not uh, uh, been solvable by a group of uh, uh, scientists. Uh, so, yes, it's uh, indeed uh, very incredible. It's uh, very powerful tools uh, if we uh, be fair and consider how it was complex back then. Going back to this question of maybe distinguishing, you know, a lot of the, the tools that get marketed as being AI today, the, you know, these things are may or may not, there's not really much actual like intelligence to them. They're just very, you know, software, you know, productivity enhancing software tools, perhaps we could call them. Like, how, how do you maybe define like artificial general intelligence and how would that be different from perhaps just some of the things, some of these fancy software tools that are marketed as artificial intelligence? Like what, what is, what is sort of the line that you have to cross for like really talking about a real intelligent, you know, kind of sentient? Well, it's uh, still uh, <laughs> the same uh, definition as uh, uh, was uh, given by pioneers of uh, this field uh, in uh, 2005 or 2007. 
so there were a few definitions and uh, uh, these scientists uh, tried to find a, a common basis for them. So uh, basically, uh, they still uh, have uh, and had uh, a little bit uh, different accents, but uh, in general, uh, uh, intelligence in the context of uh, AGI uh, was uh, defined as an ability uh, to solve a wide range of problems or achieve a wide variety of uh, goals in complex environments in a wide range of environments. And uh, uh, this is uh, still a good definition. Mm. It uh, uh, actually has uh, some uh, uh, problem uh, with uh, uh, <laughs> separating what is AI, narrow AI, and what is AGI, especially now because uh, uh, narrow AI tools are becoming uh, more and more uh, general, but they uh, still are narrow in sense uh, that uh, they are solving uh, uh, predefined problems or they are doing uh, only stuff on which uh, they were pre-trained. And uh, I would add, uh, it doesn't contradict uh, to this uh, original definition, but I would add that uh, uh, right now we would say that uh, for a general intelligence, it is uh, very important to be able uh, to solve really new problems mm. uh, out of the box. So uh, it, uh, these solutions can be slow, uh, they, will, uh, uh, they may require a lot of uh, additional thinking or training or whatever. Uh, it's like uh, AlphaGo was trained to play Go uh, by uh, playing uh, hundreds of uh, millions of games. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, if uh, we ask an uh, AGI to play only one, uh, game of Go when it was wouldn't be pre-trained on this game, then it could uh, uh, enumerate different uh, possibilities and so on in uh, runtime, in inference, not in uh, pre-training, right? So uh, if uh, our AGI system would be able to uh, solve really new problems, then yes, it would be a distinctive uh, feature of uh, AGI in comparison with. Uh, the current, even very advanced uh, AI tools. So maybe another way of putting that would be uh, essentially be the ability to think creatively or reason creatively to solve new problems in new situations where uh, pattern recognition may not apply because there may not be a pattern that, you, that, the, that the model can sync back to and look back to, uh, but being able to um, really, you know, really like, take all, all, of the, all of its learnings from the various situations and various uh, data sets and games and things and um, use that information and, those, mo and those, those, um, those algorithms or whatnot to be able to solve a new problem in a new situation. That's really the, like the, the, that's the, that's the, like the gold standard test. Yes, yes, but it's still very difficult uh, to draw the boundary because uh, uh, intelligence uh, is uh, uh, more or less always uh, uh, is based on uh, the previous data. But still, uh, yes, uh, when uh, it encounters a really novel problem, uh, the real uh, general intelligence uh, can do something with it. While uh, a narrow intelligence or just ordinary advanced uh, AI uh, will just uh, be not able to do anything. And uh, that's why we, uh, some people uh, are focusing uh, on uh, saying about uh, not just general intelligence, but about open-ended intelligence. Hmm. What do you mean by open-ended intelligence? Uh, it means that uh, it uh, doesn't uh, have uh, such restrictions, such boundaries. So hmm. uh, it uh, is capable of uh, growing. It is capable of uh, uh, mastering new areas to uh, solve new problems. Uh, so it is not restricted to, uh, to its, uh, say, pre-training or something like this. And so when we're talking about training these models and, and, and calibrating these models, uh, the, the role of data and the, the data sets that, that these models are using to train themselves or are, are being trained off of, I think the role of this data becomes much more important, right? We're already kind of, I think we're already seeing a lot of tension around that with, you know, okay, which, which data sets are, is it, is it okay for, the, for you to use to train your models? Should, should the owner of that data set be, you know, earn some sort of royalty or is there some copyright issues involved? Lots of these kind of intellectual property issues coming up. And I just want to get your, your thoughts on, um, you know, we've been hearing for, you know, 
10, 15 years about how the, you know, the data is the new oil and the data economy. And how do you see the, like really the, the found, like the data foundation being, or data really being the foundation of, of, you know, advancements in artificial general intelligence moving forward here? Like what's going to happen? What's going to need to happen to really have the, um, you know, to be able to provide that data in a, in a meaningful way? Uh, and then I guess the corollary of that would, how do you, how do you ensure that the, the owners of the data are you know, fairly compensated or, or are appropriately um, uh, you know, remunerated for use of that data? Well, uh, there are two questions here, uh, because, uh, uh, well, what uh, LLMs uh, taught us uh, is uh, that uh, scale is matters. And uh, if uh, we take uh, a lot of data and uh, be able to process it uh, in a useful way, and uh, uh, to use it in training uh, uh, of uh, deep neural networks in such a way that uh, these uh, deep neural networks will able to uh, re uh, recombine pieces of this data and uh, solve a wide variety of problems uh, like we, what we would as expect from AGI, right? Uh, it uh, will uh, have a great impact. Uh, but uh, uh, as we just uh, talked, uh, it's uh, still not an AGI. And uh, AGI is not about uh, consuming a huge amount of data, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so we could imagine a, a generally intelligent robot uh, uh, that uh, yeah. learns like uh, human kids. So it uh, just interacts with its environment, uh, it reads uh, books uh, and, and so on. So humans don't need this amount of data. Uh, it is uh, also a disadvantage of humans that we cannot consume this data, right? right. But uh, still, uh, for our general intelligence, we just uh, don't need uh, this uh, stuff. We just can uh, read uh, books which are available uh, online or in libraries uh, and, and so on. So uh, AGI uh, is not only about this data. This data is very useful for uh, this uh, advanced uh, AI, uh, which just repeats uh, uh, what was in this data. And yes, uh, uh, it is uh, extremely useful in practice for businesses uh, and so on, uh, but it might be not uh, uh, that important for AGI. It, uh, it is still very important, right? Because uh, if uh, we could uh, put all this data in uh, AGI head, then uh, well, why, why not? It, it will have advantages uh, in comparison to studying like uh, human beings uh, in uh, preschool, in school, in university, it's very long and so forth. Uh, while we just uh, not load uh, this data in uh, the AGI brain like uh, in matrix uh, skills are loaded uh, into a human brain. Uh, so, uh, yes, this is uh, one aspect. So we may not, uh, we could avoid using as much data for AGI, maybe. Uh, but uh, the second point uh, is about um, data ownership. And uh, here I, I believe uh, the best uh, solution uh, is uh, blockchain-based, is a uh, decentralization, because uh, uh, there are uh, different uh, works uh, going on here. And for example, uh, SingularityNet uh, is now uh, we will have a partnership with Ocean Protocol, which explicitly uh, focuses on uh, uh, data. So uh, blockchain uh, helps uh, people to own their pieces of internet. For example, their data, their AI models, uh, uh, or whatever. And uh, uh, it also helps uh, people to curate this data, like uh, uh, voting, uh, reputation systems, and so on. So. Uh, I am not an expert in this, but uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, decentralized uh, uh, data clouds uh, uh, based on blockchain uh, could be a solution. Got it, got it. And obviously Filecoin is a uh, decentralized data storage protocol, so obviously there's, there's a bit of an overlap here. Um, but may maybe talk a bit more about, you know, what's the, maybe the, the risk here if these decentralized solutions uh, aren't implemented as, I think there's a lot of people concerned about, okay, you know, the internet as it exists now is really kind of controlled by a handful of big tech companies. And, um, you know, some people have some problems with the way these companies behave. And 
uh, this would be even scarier if, if all of a sudden these companies are kind of controlling uh, or effectively controlling uh, you know, the future of artificial intelligence development. And, you know, pro and we've already seen some of this with you know, some of these experiments of like the Google Gemini and you know, some of, the, some of the, the way that these things have been programmed um, that haven't maybe been um, maybe like, I think it's kind of raised a bit a few red flags of like, okay, if we have some sort of centralized company that's determining what data gets in and what gets spit out from these models, that could be pretty problematic for a variety of reasons. Um, but I just want to get your thoughts on that. Like, what are the, like, why is decentralization in this context so important? Well, uh, Basically, you said already <laughs> everything I, I could say. Indeed, if we consider like uh, uh, sci-fi movies or fantasy movies, uh, uh, like uh, Lord of the Rings or books, uh, uh, when uh, there is a source of uh, incredible power, it calls, uh, and uh, this source can be controlled by one entity, uh, it uh, uh, can have this. Uh, uh problem with uh, like uh, uh, patholo pathology of uh, central control when uh, well if uh, even uh, uh, humans with uh, good intentions uh, uh, have a control over it uh, it may happen that uh, uh, something else uh, will uh, got a control uh, over this source of power and uh, maybe the best solution would be to uh, drop uh, this uh, one ring uh, into uh, <laughs> the magma, lava, <laughs> or something else, yes. Uh, so, uh, it's not the whole uh, answer to the problem of uh, safety, but uh, indeed, uh, uh, one of uh, the most considerable uh, problems uh, is uh, uh, centralized uh, control over, uh, AGI, over future AGI or over current AGI development and uh, decentralization uh, with the use of uh, reputation systems, voting mechanisms, decentralized autonomous organizations uh, for making decisions uh, uh, what is uh, the way to go or no go. Uh, it's uh, indeed uh, at least a part of solution uh, to the problem of uh, AI safety. Conversations around AI, we tend to hear it it's either uh, in, in Portuguese they follow like it's ning oito nem intent. It's like it's neither eight nor eighty. It's like one hundred. It's it's either uh, like extreme kind of fear mongering or it's sort of fear extreme. Like oh, this is the most amazing thing. It's going to change everything. It's going to change the way humans live. And 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 I'm just wondering. I have a hard time kind of cutting through the hype on some of this stuff. Okay, like you know, some days it's like okay, I I see how powerful these technologies are. It's going to take all of our jobs away. It's going to you know, we're going to be uh, robots are going to be our like our overlords and masters and things. And on the other hand, you see the potential of these tools like, wow, this could like really liberate a lot of I mean, the same way that uh, that that, uh, you know, the Internet and the Industrial Revolution really like liberated people to be able to take on more like meaningful value generating work aside from just agrarian work. Right. So um, I guess the question for you is like, OK, is this is this this trend, this development, is this something that people should be perhaps afraid of? Like, is there reason to be afraid of this? Or is this, do you see this as uh, another tool for just unlocking human creativity and human potential? Well, as uh, uh, any technology, uh, it can be used uh, for good and for bad. Uh, but uh, when uh, we consider their overall uh, technical progress, I believe that uh, uh, many people are living now uh, better lives than say kings uh, lived uh, several hundred years ago so uh, technology provides us with an additional value even if uh, this value is first uh, obtained by a small group of people uh, uh, it uh, starts uh, spreading uh, over the whole uh, population and uh, our well-being uh, is improved i believe uh, so this is uh, the first uh, part of uh, the answer. And the second uh, part is, yes, uh, we for sure are interested in a beneficial general intelligence, beneficial for all the humanity. And it's not the problem of uh, technology, but uh, the problem of uh, governance, uh, as uh, we discussed, uh, uh, and so on. You are not afraid of uh, losing your job. You are afraid of uh, losing uh, money for your well-being, for food and, and so on uh, you can still uh, continue uh, 
making uh, taking interviews with people uh, if you are not get paid uh, but uh, it will be a hobby it will not be a job uh, if uh, uh, the value produced uh, by um, this uh, powerful technologies uh, uh, will be spread over the humanity then it will not be a problem right uh, so that's why we need a beneficial general intelligence. Uh, there are also additional uh, components uh, of uh, this problem because, uh, uh, yes, uh, some people are afraid of uh, the existential risks uh, which uh, are brought uh, by the creation of uh, artificial general intelligence. Uh, it's uh, complicated. Uh, we cannot rule out uh, these risks. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, create... Uh, an absolutely safe uh, AGI. Uh, there is no absolute safety, right? Uh, so uh, you uh, sit into the car and uh, drive it, uh, uh, but, uh, well, uh, car accidents is a, a great source of uh, human death, uh, but uh, you are still using it. So uh, we need to mitigate risks uh, produced by AGI, uh, but it's uh, not... Uh, uh, the reason uh, for uh, not doing this. Basically, we, uh, <laughs> the main point is that we cannot avoid the creation of AGI. And, but what we can do uh, is uh, to facilitate the uh, beneficial outcome of it. I would also add that uh, uh, some people uh, consider AGI as uh, uh, something uh, omnipotent. So, like, uh, it can do anything... Uh, uh, like a magic. Uh, it will not be the case. AGI uh, will have uh, the same physical and mathematical limitations uh, which a human have. So uh, it will uh, not uh, be able uh, to do anything just because it is an AGI. And uh, uh, it, it will uh, live uh, in the same world uh, as we are. Uh, also, we, it's we uh, who are building AGI, right? Uh, we are humans. We want an AGI to value us. Uh, and if it will value us, why it will extinct us? Why it will uh, kill uh, all, all the humans? Uh, I, I believe it uh, can happen uh, only uh, if uh, uh, it is intentional, some uh, <laughs> evil entity will create AGI for doing the, this stuff. Or... Uh, if uh, it is uh, uh, some great mistake. Uh, but uh, uh, yes, there are some uh, downsides. Uh, there, are, uh, there could be uh, some uh, losses, uh, like uh, uh, in uh, some period of time, some humans may lose uh, some jobs. Uh, uh, but it is uh, happening uh, with the invention of uh, any technology. Yeah. But, but yes, uh, I don't think that... Uh, uh, the danger coming from AGI is that great uh, if we approach it uh, carefully. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like we have, we've already have a bit of a, a clash between, you know, kind of the, the development of AGI and just artificial intelligence generally. And then uh, governments, there's a, the, I think a lot of governments, have, and especially in the EU and even in the US, have been taking, you know, pretty proactive approaches to trying to like regulate the technology and uh, create you know, certain restrictions and rules on, on like, who can run these models or what data can you use. And um, to me, at least, it seems kind of early for this because we're, s we're still in the early stages, but I think I, I, it, it seems like there's, uh, there's kind of like a power clash happening here. And um, you know, even coming from the world of crypto, we kind of, we've, we're, we're quite familiar with these, these power clashes, right? Because crypto at, fundamentally presents like an alternative system, you know, financial system or, or, or whatnot to, to what, what currently exists. And I'm just kind of wondering, like, what's your take on this power clash, right? As, as, as these systems become larger than any, like, single government can control or any, any, any group of governments can potentially control? Oh, well, uh, I'm not an expert on regulations, basically. Uh, and uh, what I would say is that it's very difficult to, to define uh, what uh, even AI is because... Uh, uh, now when uh, it is uh, helpful, uh, uh, people could uh, call a logistic regression AI, right? Uh, but uh, uh, when uh, uh, some regulations uh, will be introduced, uh, okay, it's uh, not uh, an AI, it's uh, just uh, mathematical statistics. So uh, I, I'm not sure uh, uh, there are some uh, regulations on uh, uh, genomics uh, and uh, some countries uh, introduce them uh, 
like uh, modifying uh, human genes, uh, others uh, like China uh, that don't do this. Uh, and uh, well, uh, I see that uh, re regulations, it, it's difficult to say that regulations are bad in general, but uh, they are too slow in terms of uh, adapting to the new reality. We are uh, in a, a piece of time when we approach singularity and things are happening too fast. And even uh, uh, experts uh, in this uh, stuff, uh, they uh, cannot uh, fully comprehend what is going on, how it is happening, uh, and, and so on. So uh, regulations are just uh, too slow for this, uh, in my case. I, I cannot uh, uh, say that uh, we can avoid them totally, but uh, uh, my feeling is that uh, they cannot be fully uh, adequate. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, it's a it's maybe like a sand in the gears, uh, trying to slow down the process a little bit, just so we can better understand things, uh, while we you know give us a bit more buy us a bit more time to better understand uh, the correct approach, essentially. Um, and then maybe going back to this intersection of of blockchain and, and AI, right? We already talked about the data ownership component, but are there other areas? where you see there to be like a real, you know, like an overlap that, that makes sense here, or it, it, both in terms of the technology or potentially the communities. There's obviously a lot of crypto projects right now that are kind of marketing themselves as AI projects, but some of that is maybe, you know, maybe not quite legitimate, but uh, it's good marketing, I guess. Uh, but but are, there, are there areas where you see, um, you know, overlap between these two worlds that, that, that will continue to, to grow in your opinion in the future? Well, uh, as we discussed uh, in the case of uh, the distributed and decentralized AI itself, it uh, makes sense because uh, uh, we can uh, have uh, AI services or AI agents uh, like other uh, companies like Fetch AI, uh, I call in, uh, them, which uh, interact uh, to each other based on uh, the blockchain and uh, it's uh, very convenient in terms of uh, payments. So you don't uh, have uh, uh, to provide an AI service uh, with uh, some uh, ID card to be able to pay for another service to do something. And uh, this is uh, very good uh, in terms of uh, emergence of uh, AI uh, networks, uh, distributed and decentralized networks. Uh, of course, uh, there are other uh, quite uh, straightforward connections uh, between uh, AI and uh, blockchain in terms of uh, uh, decentralized uh, finances. You mentioned uh, Singularity DAO, for example, uh, and uh, any actually uh, DEX or TEX uh, uh, is using uh, some AI tools uh, for uh, balancing portfolios, for predicting uh, cryptocurrency rates uh, and so on. Well, there are other interesting connections uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, they are uh, really important or not, but uh, what uh, pop ups in uh, my mind is uh, some uh, relation uh, between uh, generative AI and the NFTs, for example. Mm. So, yeah, I'm not <laughs> ready to uh, speculate on this question more, but... <laughs> <laughs> Going back to maybe uh, maybe just make a couple predictions here. Would love your you've you've been in this world for well like 25 years now of, of building out uh, artificial intelligence and research, and um, you know I'm just really curious to think more about like what's the world going to look like in in 10 years, uh, and, and and maybe even to maybe frame this a bit more uh, tangibly, like what are some maybe current activities that we do every day right now that will be uh, rendered obsolete by by the the development of, of artificial intelligence. Like thinking, maybe thinking back, like you know, right now to me, like the idea of using a uh, a landline telephone is is sort of comical. Like I haven't done that in many years, right? Or using like a typewriter. Or uh, what are some activities you think now that people do every day that will be like totally you know outsourced to to artificial intelligence? You think? Oh, well, uh, it's uh, actually really difficult uh, to predict uh, such sort of things uh, because, uh, uh, for example, um, sci-fi writers uh, depicted uh, something like uh, video phones uh, which were attached uh, to walls uh, because uh, uh, they 
uh, uh, couldn't predict uh, that uh, it will be wireless and uh, uh, handheld uh, and so on. So it uh, looked uh, uh, very different. So they predicted one uh, piece uh, of uh, this story, uh, but without other pieces, uh, uh, their vision uh, was uh, uh, very divergent uh, from uh, what has happened uh, in reality. Uh, so it's uh, really difficult, uh, and especially be because of the disruptive nature of uh, the AI technology and uh, in general what is happening right now in terms of uh, our uh, up, uh, movement towards uh, technological singularity. Uh, well, it, it's really difficult to predict. I would say that uh, uh, physical activities uh, are much uh, more difficult uh, for uh, AI and uh, robotics right now than uh, some uh, information activities. And uh, this uh, may not change in uh, like 10 years. So we may have, uh, uh, well, once again, it's not uh, only the question of uh, uh, the technology itself, it's uh, also the question of uh, society because uh, uh, we could uh, already have uh, the system of uh, autonomous uh, uh, cars uh, uh, if uh, we just uh, uh, organize our roads in a different way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it is uh, economically, uh, it would be very uh, difficult in terms of uh, the necessary amount of resources to be put uh, into this. So everything is happening much uh, more slow. And maybe if uh, uh, we arranged uh, our road systems in such a way that uh, uh, only autonomous cars uh, would uh, drive these roads. Uh, uh, there would be much less uh, traffic jams, much, much less accidents, and uh, everything would uh, look uh, quite different. Or yeah. uh, say if uh, uh, like uh, quadrocopter taxis uh, uh, would come to reality and uh, different companies are working on them, but uh, it uh, requires uh, some uh, infrastructural changes in our city planning uh, and so on. Uh, I am uh, not... Uh, uh, expert in uh, such social dynamics, uh, so I, I cannot predict uh, how it will uh, look uh, like uh, from uh, uh, our everyday uh, point of view. I believe uh, that uh, a, a lot of uh, physical stuff we are doing right now will uh, still be uh, necessary for us. Uh, uh, but uh, a, a lot of uh, information processing things uh, will be simplified, yeah. Got it, got it. That makes a lot of sense, right? There's, there's, when you get into the realm of physical activities or like driving a car, for instance, even if the technology does exist to be able to drive perhaps better than a human uh, autonomously, uh, the cities are just not necessarily set up for that. And then there's a, there's a level of, of social infrastructure that has to be uh, kind of redone, essentially. Uh, social physical infrastructure has to be redone for that, that to be like technically possible, right? So that makes a lot of sense, I guess. That that that, that maybe helps uh, kind of frame what what's realistic and what's not. Um, maybe just to wrap up here, uh, anything, uh, or maybe maybe talk a bit more about what uh, Singularity Singularity Net is working on right now. What what are some of your focuses at the moment? Um, anything uh, exciting that we should be looking out for? Well, yes, uh, we are actually Alpha releasing uh, our. Uh... Uh, agi uh, R&D platform, uh, which is called OpenCock Hyperon. Uh, uh, it is uh, still uh, for early adopters, uh, adopters because uh, uh, we have not yet tried to solve uh, performance issues, so it's uh, more to get familiar with the concept itself. Uh, uh, but uh, we are going uh, to alpha release this uh, uh, in a week or two, uh, so uh, and this will be a step for us uh, uh, to uh, proceed from uh, from a ground uh, ground work to uh, more agile uh, R and D by ourselves and to attract the community uh, to do so with us. Uh, uh, we are also um, uh, doing a, a lot of uh, improvements uh, to the platform itself with uh, the novel uh, idea of. Uh, knowledge layer for blockchain. I'm not uh, an expert uh, in uh, blockchain, so <laughs> I will not go into detail here, but uh, it's also amazing. And uh, uh, basically, the, uh, w w one of the ideas is uh, to uh, really merge these components. We uh, had this vision uh, in our white paper, and uh, it is uh, finally 
uh, coming true. So uh, we uh, will uh, start working uh, on uh, SDK for the platform, which will be uh, which uh, will be uh, uh, yeah called from our uh, Hyperon uh, uh, platform. So they will be fully uh, interoperable, like. Uh, uh, we can have a reasoning system uh, which uh, will be able to call LLMs on the platform, knowledge graphs on the platform, and uh, other stuff. Uh, uh, and uh, this will uh, be really a step uh, towards uh, starting, uh, start uh, working on a real uh, uh, decentralized proto HI systems. Uh, another uh, uh, big news is that uh, we are. Uh, merging with uh, Ocean Protocol and uh, Fetch AI. Uh, so it uh, will uh, uh, first uh, help us uh, to uh, unify, unite uh, our frameworks with uh, the data, with AI agents and AI services. And uh, it will also uh, enlarge our community so more people will uh, participate uh, in uh, its governance. So may maybe this is uh, the main news uh, for today. Um, well, well, thank you, Alexei, for your time here. It's really interesting uh, just getting a brain dump for you on everything that's been happening. And uh, you know, you've obviously been in this world for so long and have a wealth of intelligence and knowledge about this. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with us today. Thanks a lot. Uh, very good questions. Uh, it was nice uh, to talk to you. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next time.